Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companion set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent word to them, My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about 40 years he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judge judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. 
My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen. But so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Our Lord Jesus, of course, is speaking here in this progression of um, in this progression of evangelization, of the sharing of the gospel. This procession that occurs within um, history, certainly, we understand it. How, how the message of Christ has come to us as shared by those who have first held it, as those who have first um, spoken the word of Almighty God. And also this progression that flows within God himself. We see God the Father who loves the Son. And there is this movement whereby the Father sends the Son for he so loved the world that he gave the world his only begotten Son. And, and with the Son who comes to, to unite us in a personal way with divinity itself, but returns unto divinity itself, where his rightful place is, where our place can be through him in God, that so too he sends the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit which proceeds from the Father and the Son, which proceeds from that very love shared between, that is, shared with us. And so there's this progression, this, this movement of, of sharing, this movement of, of continuing um, exposure. Whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. And just as we can be um, vivified and inspired by the Holy Spirit, then can we, with that gift of the Holy Spirit, with the very mandate of the Lord Jesus himself, we can go and sh share the gospel. Is the gospel something that you happened upon yourself? Is it something that you picked up off of a dusty shelf in a library amongst so many other tomes? Or is the gospel a lived encounter? And yes, perhaps some of us have come to the gospel um, by study and by, by, um, by, by some uh, particular encounter, an incident in our lives where we have, as it were, come to the knowledge of the faith by intellect, perhaps before any kind of personal or emotional encounter. 
But even then, I would dare say that the Lord had already prepared our hearts in some ways, in culture, in civilization itself, prepared our hearts to receive him. So that which we preach, that which we receive, that which we have, does not come from us, but is given unto us. And as we freely give from ourselves, then do we know that we have all the more. Certainly we understand that in material sense, but all the more so is profoundly that the gifts that the Lord gives us, especially that gift of faith, is something that cannot be merely held for ourselves. Otherwise it will become stagnant. But that as we give it forth, as it proceeds from us, sending forth, then there is more life in the other and in us. There can be a great communion. Is that not the communion of the Holy Trinity? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so let us today take pause to see how can I preach the gospel in my words sometimes, but all the more in my actions. It doesn't mean that we have to be perfect. It doesn't mean that we don't fall in sometimes our own human inclinations towards anger or impatience or other such things won't get in the way. They will. We're still human, of course. And some of that humanity causes us to trip up. But at the heart of it, do we still desire the good? Do we still preach the gospel? Or do we preach our own words? We know in St. Paul how that preaching spread far and wide, as we heard in our first reading. We know in the example of St. Catherine of Siena how much that gospel spread far and wide as she rebuilt the church which was so lost in those years of the 14th century. And so to us, how far the good news of Christ Jesus can go through you, the people of this time, the people of this place. Amen. Yes, Lord, our nature is still human that is marked by our weakness, marked by those weak tendencies of our human um, selfishness and, and so forth. But we know that inspired by your Holy Spirit, you call us to divine nature in Christ Jesus. And so through him, we raise these prayers and petitions, seeking your good in our world and in our lives. For the people of God. May we be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in our faith and witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those in positions of earthly power, may the Lord grant them charity and prudence in their efforts to bend the arc of history toward justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those struggling with difficult decisions and the burdens of circumstances, May God give them the grace and strength to endure and overcome. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who are gathered here, may Christ in the Eucharist continue to transform us for his work in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, and this morning we remember Charles and Marion Matthew. May they rejoice in the presence of God for all of eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of remembrance, those we have been asked to pray for, and those we lift up from the depths of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful and loving Lord, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers. And as you give us the witness of the saints, especially St. Catherine of Siena among them, 
so too may we bear witness to all that is good and holy in this our world. For we raise these prayers through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, and at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as without end they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Catherine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Right? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may we go from this place encouraged by the witness of the good saints, especially St. Catherine among them, who was, uh, is, is, is recognized as co-patroness of Europe today, but uh, at the time was certainly one who was bold in her calling back the church to faithfulness, to holiness, to that truth uh, that, is, that is born of the witness of the martyrs and the proclamation of the gospel. And so let us um, have that same zeal as St. Catherine of Siena did, especially as we see a world that is so eager to uh, find its own truth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him with humble prayer, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
O sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint John the Evangelist, all holy men and women,